Lord be with you. And also with you. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ. There is one body and one spirit, just as we were called to the one hope of our calling. In the name of Christ, the great head of the church, and on behalf of the Presbyterian of Peaks, the session and congregation of Alta Vista Presbyterian Church, let me welcome you to Presbyterian service of installation of Eduardo Soto as pastor of Alta Vista Presbyterian Church. Today's service is a, the formal accumulation of a long process that has brought Ed and Betsy into our midst. It began with his early education and growth in faith through the Pentecostal tradition of his parents who are here with us, including his call into ministry at a very early age. It continued when he made promises at his baptism as a young adult, and there have been many others who have been significant influence in his life who have nurtured and educated him in the faith, including folks here in the Pressure of the Peaks where he was a candidate for ministry, as well as folks and mentors and pastors of College Presbyterian Church at Hampton City where he went to college. So today's service is a visible and tangible expression of what it means to be a part of Christ's church and the connection of church today. It is a day for great joy, thanksgiving, and celebration. As I introduce or recognize various groups of us here today, I would ask you to stand as you are able and remain standing through the call to worship and opening hymn. Let me first introduce First Street's commission to or to install. The Reverend Amanda Hayes Bowen, Minister of the Word and Sacrament and uh, Chaplain at New Century Hospice in Farmville, Virginia. The Reverend Christy Miles, <laughs> Minister of the Word and Sacrament and uh, a uh, uh, Chaplain at Westminster Canterbury in Lynchburg, Virginia, and liaison to this congregation and to the PNC. Mr. Uh, Reverend Andrew Taylor Trout, Minister of the Word and Sacrament and pastor at New Dublin Presbyterian Church, Dublin, Virginia, where Ed did a short internship during his time with us. Mr. Gary Brown. Andrew's. Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I always do that, Gary? What's your body, Mr. You know him, Gary Andrew. <laughs> Chair of the PNC. I mean, oh my gosh. <laughs> Gary, excuse me. Good to have you with us today. And thank you for all your hard work and the PNC's hard work. Let me, just while you're standing, have the rest of the PNC stand, if you would, as well. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, and Mrs. E.A. Mayo, who is a ruling elder at um, College Presbyterian Church, and Mr. John Collins, a uh, ruling elder at Chatham Presbyterian Church, and sitting with the commission, Reverend Betsy Soto, associate Presbyterian, and um, a minister of the Word and Sacrament uh, at, in Charlotte Presbyterian, and obvious related. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the Reverend Steve Earl, associate Presbyterian for ministry and moderator of this commission to install. Now, would all the ruling elders, whether you're active or not active, here at Alpha Vista, would you please stand? <laughs> Very good. Any other ruling elders from other congregations, would you please stand? And teaching elders who are members of the Presbytery of the Peaks, would you please stand? For all of you ruling elders and teaching elders, there is a sign-up sheet there at the back of the narthex. We ask you to put your name on that so we can record it in the minutes of our Presbytery. 
And now, do we have any ruling elders or teaching elders from outside the press of the peaks? If you're present, would you stand? Good. Okay. Any um, ecumenical guests that are with us today? <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, and family and friends and guests of Ed's and Betsy's who are here to join us in this special occasion, would you stand? Anybody else who's a member of this congregation? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This congregation has patiently and prayerfully sought to call a minister and pastor over the last number of months. Presha now commends you and your leader for your faithful diligence in this search process. Now, in concurring with your call to Ed, we pray that this ministry with you may bear much fruit for the kingdom and your ministry to <coughs> strengthen him as God's servant for this time and this place. Friends, will you join me in our sentences of scripture? Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Most High is awesome. And a great sovereign over all the earth. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praises to your name, O Most High. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, by your grace you have called us in this time and place to be your servant peoples as we follow our servant, Lord. Make your Holy Spirit move within and among us, that together we may live a new life in the crucified and risen Christ. Bind us together in faith, so that as we receive all spiritual gifts needed to fulfill our calling, we may support one another in common ministry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Will you sing with me now? I greet thee to my sure redeemer Artemis number 457. <laughs>
false and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, by what the Lord and Holy Spirit, do you baptize us to be your own and call the church into being. We confess that we hold back the love of your Spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace. Seek the good news of your love, or live as a people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our lives by the power of your Holy Spirit, and take song our common witness to the one Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. mercy out of the great love with which God loved us, even when we were dead for our sin, made us alive together with Christ, and raised us up with him. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is a gift from God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Uh, let us go to God in prayer. Overwhelm us with your Holy Spirit, O oh God, that the words we hear will speak to our hearts as your word. Be known to us in Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson today is from Psalms 27, 4 through 9. For one thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies round about me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Thou hast said, seek my face. My heart says to thee, thy face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not thy face from me. <clears throat> Turn not thy servant away in anger. Thou who hast been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation.
offered several kinnings about Jesus in her own work. Dickinson referred to Christ as largest lover, as the brave beloved. She called him gigantic sum and tender carpenter. But my favorite, and the one I'm most intrigued by, is Jesus as tender pioneer. As we reflect upon what it means to be called fishers of people, I invite us to first consider how Jesus is a tender pioneer. Naturally, we want to define those words. And Dickinson claimed that her 1844 Webster's Dictionary was her best friend, <laughs> which makes sense if you know anything about the famous recluse. So this Webster's defines tender as anxious for another's good. We may hear the word anxious as negative, as a description of a condition of worry, perhaps needs to be medicated. <laughs> but early English made a distinction between anxiety about something and being anxious for someone. The latter meant that you were excited and eager Jesus, then, is tender in that he is eager for you and for me to be our very best, which is to live into our calling. So this is helpful for me as I think about these original disciples in their boats, including my namesake, Andrew, a man who left behind not only what he had, but also who he was. In the ancient world, people were not typically upwardly mobile. They did not, for example, attend Princeton Seminary and then come to take over the helm of a church in Virginia. <laughs> Sons took over the craft of their father. Your identity as a member in the community was based in large part by your profession. So my last name, Troutman, gives you an idea of what some of my ancestors may have done. Leaving behind not only what you have, but also who you are, may cause great anxiety. Anxiety in the negative sense. Worry, apprehension, even outright fear. So please think of Jesus as the tender pioneer. Perhaps the pioneer calls to mind someone like Daniel Boone. While many things, that man was not tender. According to any definition. But Dickinson's Webster defined pioneer as one who goes before another to remove an obstruction. Or as one who prepares the way. A pioneer then leads for the benefit of others. How could Jesus ask that Andrew and those other fishermen to leave behind all that they had and all who they were. How could he ask the same of this Andrew speaking before you? How could he ask the same of you sitting where you are today? It's because Jesus added, follow me. All these years later, you and I don't have to strike out on our own. We are following in Christ's footsteps in our calling. Now, you should know that I think very highly of the pastor you all have called. Ed likes old things. Do you know this? When he entered at New Dublin, a congregation, by the way, founded in 1769, Ed participated in such activities as shooting old rifles with black powder. And by now, no one needs to stand here and tell you that he has a fondness for that old John Calvin. <laughs> you know, the Protestant Reformation is also pretty old. 500 years. I believe that you and I would do well to recall anew what Martin Luther once said. Remember your baptism. We are baptized into Christ's death because our tender pioneer goes before us into the ultimate deep that we may swim in the living water. Calvin said something like that, I'm sure. I can, I can tell you. Please hear this from me. You may or may not be called off 
a boat. But because of your baptism, you too are called to become fishers of people. And so I want to point to a seemingly insignificant word in our text. It is the word immediately. The Gospel of Mark, which Matthew used as a reference, writing his own text, uses this adverb almost constantly. According to Mark, nearly everything happens immediately. And perhaps thinking such repetition would dull a reader's sense of the word's definition, Matthew often deletes this adverb, even as he retells the same stories, but not here. For both Matthew and for Mark, both sets of brothers leave immediately. Another thing I know about Ed is that he comes from a Pentecostal upbringing. Perhaps he has you speaking in tongues. <laughs> not yet. He did not try that in tongues. I, however, would suggest for your prayerful consideration that sometimes the blessing of the Holy Spirit is your gut, which tells you to do something immediately. For Christ, the tender pioneer who is eager, eager to lead you boldly. So let me close with a story from New Dublin. It starts with an ordinary afternoon, just another car in our gravel parking lot. I told you the church was founded in 1769, and the cemetery is almost as old. And so people travel from all over the country to hunt the tombstones of their lost relatives. Usually I stop and talk about you know, the weather or something. But she was different. Something in my gut told me so. I did not know the tombstone that she was trying to find, and so I might have left it at that. But something nudged me to invite her to our worship service the next day, and she showed up a good ten minutes late, which meant she had to walk all the way forward to the front pew <laughs> where no one was sitting. <laughs> this was not Easter or Mother's Day. And so everyone got a good look at this new visitor. And at Lemonade on the Lawn, after the closing benediction, one of our members offered to walk her to her car so they could continue the conversation. I know, I know, we're taught to mind our own business, right? But this particular member noticed that our visitor had clothes piled up in her back seat. And so she asked why. This woman, this visitor, this child of God, broke down in tears. And she admitted she was living out of her car. She'd been late to worship because she bathed in the New River. <coughs> There's an irony there. What we call new is actually one of the oldest North American rivers. An irony there, where a visitor is new, may become someone quite familiar. Slowly but surely, like water going over a stone, our friend has smoothed out her life. She was helped by a number of people who responded immediately. A gas card here, a bag of groceries there, helping with her taxes, arranging an interview with social services, a reference call for a job, a call to a friend of a neighbor's second cousin about an apartment. Our tender pioneer can work with such as these who answer the call to become fishers of people. One bright Sunday, she came to church 10 minutes early because she most urgently wanted to speak to me. She had a request. She wanted to be fulfilled immediately. And as the sunlight streamed through the windows on the faces of all those members who had felt their call, the same passing light glistened on the water in our font before it was pressed three times to her forehead. And as she was baptized into the death of our tender pioneer, the water trickled down her face and mixed 
with her salty tears. The Spirit was moving. We were blessed to be a witness. Amen. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as we join voices <coughs> old and new. The profession of faith that spans time and space is known as the Apostles' Creed. If you are able, please rise. <coughs> So desire these words may be found at the very front of your hymnals on page 14. So I ask you, O oh church, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You remain standing, please, as we sing with faith. The church's one foundation is in 442.
as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. <laughs> so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry to ministering. The teacher in teaching. The exhorter in exhortation. The giver in generosity. The leader in diligence. Let us not lag in zeal, but be ardent in spirit, serving the Lord. We are called out by God to be the church of Jesus Christ, a sign in the world today of the new life that God intends for us all. In our life together, we are to display the new reality that sin is forgiven. Reconciliation is accomplished, and the dividing walls of hostility are torn down. As the living body of Christ, the church is called to proclaim the good news of salvation, to present the claims of the gospel on people's lives, and to demonstrate Christ's love in service to the world. We are called to undertake this mission even at the risk of life, trusting God in all things. In faith, we embrace a new openness to what God is doing right now in our time. A renewed obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ and a new joy in our common worship and work together. Today we reclaim our historic calling and remember the great ends of the church. Please join with me in this saying then. The proclamation of the gospel for the salvation of humankind, the shelter, nurture, and spiritual fellowship of the children of God, the maintenance of divine worship, the preservation of the truth, the promotion of social The ministry of the church is shared by pastor and people so that all together may fulfill the mission to which we are called in Jesus Christ. The particular responsibility of the ministry of the word and sacrament is to build up the church and serve the people of God so that the word may be rightly proclaimed and the sacraments rightly celebrated. <coughs> the call to this ministry has been extended by the congregation, accepted by the, accepted by the candidate, and approved by the presbytery. Therefore, the presbytery of the peaks, by means of this commission, now installs Reverend Water. Soto Jr. as pastor of the Alta Vista Presbyterian Church. In his baptism, Ed was clothed with Christ. He was ordained to the ministry of word and sacrament by the Presbytery of Charlotte and is now called by God through the voice of the church to serve as pastor of this congregation. Let's all say, We remember with joy our common calling to serve Christ and we celebrate God's call to our brother to serve among us Ed, you know who we are and what we believe, and you know who you are and what you believe. Would you confirm your call by answering the following questions? Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge Him Lord of all and Head of the Church, and through Him, Believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you? I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be by the Holy Spirit 
the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you. Do you? I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you? Be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God. Do you and will you? I do, and I will with God's help. Will you be a minister of the word and sacrament in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and continually guided by the confessions? Will you? I will with God's help. Will you be governed by the church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? I will, with God's help. Will you, you in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? I will, with God's help. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? I do. Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? I surely will. <laughs> will you be a faithful minister, proclaiming the good news in word and sacrament, teaching faith and caring for people, Will you be active in government and discipline, serving in the councils of the church and in your ministry? Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will, God help. Questions to the congregation. Do we, the members of the church, accept Ed as our pastor, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to guide us in the way of Jesus Christ? Do we, we do. We, we do. do. Do we agree to encourage him to respect his decisions and to follow as he guides us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is here of the church? Do we? We, we do. do. We promise to pay him fairly and provide for his welfare as he works among us to stand by him in trouble and share his joy. Will we listen to the word he preaches? Welcome his pastoral care and honor his authority as he seeks to honor and obey Jesus Christ, our Lord. We do. We do. We do. The Lord. <laughs> and I invite the members, the rest of the members of the commission, to come up around, as well as any teaching and ruling elders present to come forward for that important. An ancient ritual of the church on the laying on of hands. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. All praise be yours, Lord God of our salvation. By your word you called creation into being and made us in your image to love and serve you. By your saving love you sent Jesus Christ to live among us, to redeem your people and establish your peace. By your Holy Spirit, you shower gifts on your children, opening hearts and worlds to your grace, empowering us to live holy and joyful lives. We praise you, eternal God, for the church throughout the world, born of your love, saved by your grace, 
and sustained by your Holy Spirit. Make us the community you have called us to be, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, your very own people, gifted to proclaim your marvelous love. Gracious God, we praise you that you have chosen servants in every age to speak your word and lead your loyal people. We give you thanks for your servant Ed and for the ministry to which he has been called here in this church. Give Ed a full measure of the gifts of your Holy Spirit, both in the walk of faith and for the work of ministry. Anoint Ed with power to proclaim the gospel in word and sacrament, in witness and in service, in truth and in love, for the building up of the people of God and for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Generous God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon this congregation and all its people that baptized into your service and united in Christ's love, they may serve you with joy and faithfulness until all things are made new. Let the word they proclaim be your word of truth. Let the compassion they show to the world be your love in Christ. Let their common life as pastor and people together be holy, peaceable, and glad in your spirit. Gracious God, accept all that we are and have in the service of Jesus Christ and strengthen us by the power of your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. <laughs> As a minister of the Word and Sacrament in the Church of Jesus Christ, you are now installed as pastor of this congregation of this Presbyterian Church. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Welcome to the ministry here and in this place. And I invite everyone here to extend that right hand for Christian fellowship. years ago, one of the ministers in our presbytery gave a sermon that I have not forgotten at a presbytery meeting. And in it, he told the story, he said, at the end of his seminary career, right at the very end of the class, they asked the professor one day, he said, Professor, what is the most important thing that we are to do as a minister? And the minister didn't hesitate. He said, tell them about Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. So my charge to you is to do that. You do that through your preaching. Uh, and this means you study, preparation, <coughs> work, 
and learning how your congregation heals. You do this through your personal life by showing unlimited love to each member of this church and of this community. You show this, do it by showing love to your family. And it's important, showing love to yourself by taking care of yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually. Now you have a tough job, and I do all of it. But I want you to know that you have many resources. My charge is that you also call on these resources. You have the Presbyterian, you have your fellow Presbyterian ministers and your fellow community ministers. Please use them. You have a lovely wife to show you the importance of intimate love and the caring of another person. You have a wonderful congregation already obvious that will be there to help you in every way possible. Call on them for yourself as well as for the community. So in closing, I will say, I will repeat what that wise professor, I think, told his class. He said, your charge in our system and in this world is to tell them about Jesus. congregation, I want to say that I was not actually Ed's first choice for this job. Um, he initially asked my father Tom to do this. And he was looking forward to being here and participating in this service with all of us. Um, I think he is here with us in spirit. If you take a look at Ed's and my stoles, he actually designed and helped make them as ordination gifts for the two of us. He was as proud of Ed as he was of me. And I hope that my words contain a fraction of the wisdom that he had. Hear these words from 1 Peter 4. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves <coughs> must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever. Amen. Amen. Ed's call is to seek to serve you, the people, with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. He will laugh with you in your joys, and he will weep with you in your sorrows. He will celebrate all of your accomplishments, and he will love you with boundless love. But as a part of the priesthood of all believers, you also have a call. And part of your call is to take care of your pastor. Celebrate with Ed. Weep with him. Teach him. And love him. And if the last two weeks are any indication of this, I don't think you're going to have a lot of problems. <laughs> Thank you. This call that we all walk is not an easy road all the time. It's full of twists and turns and rocks and hard places, as well as joy that is beyond belief. As you go on this journey with Ed, continue doing the work of Christ. Maintain constant love for one another, to the glory of the God whose love for us knows no ending. 
Thanks be to God. First, I would like to bring you all greetings from College Church on campus of Hazen's in the College, and also to bring you greetings from the college, where only last Sunday, uh, we graduated nearly 200 young men, and we're about six years ago, I think, uh, your new pastor, Ed, also graduated uh, from that venerable institution. There are some other connections that uh, we have, and I'm speaking now of College Church and this church. Uh, one of your members, one of your late members, Christine, Hamlet Oliver was the twin sister of Lindy Hamlet, who was a pillar of College Church. And Christine visited her brother uh, often uh, <clears throat> during her lifetime. And on many of those occasions, her son, uh, Russell, <coughs> accompanied her. And I remember many, many years ago uh, in teaching Sunday school that Russell was a um, when they were in town on all Sundays, Russell was a member of a Sunday school class that I taught for youngsters. So uh, he grew up in this church. And as you all know, only this spring, several months ago, um, he had an untimely and unexpected uh, death. He had been living in the uh, Hampton City area while he worked in Farmer for many years. And we all felt uh, a kinship with you all and certainly with uh, that family uh, during those times. And uh, he and his mother both are buried in the college church center. So as uh, Earl mentioned earlier, are we, are we a connected <laughs> church? Are we a connected uh, people? And as far as the connections, uh, Ed has said that today's offering will be received by the Presbytery for the purpose of supporting the educational expenses of candidates and inquirers in preparation for ministry through the Candidates Scholarship Fund. And as those of you who know me, I always seem to say one more thing. And the one <laughs> should have written all this down. Uh, but I do want to say to this too about College Church and Ed that um, he, when he first came on campus, he began attending uh, the church and had a close relationship with the, with the pastor there. And there were church members and maybe even more important, uh, some college professors who had a great deal to do with his call, uh, his becoming an inquirer uh, in the Presbyterian church. And certainly, the church nurtured him through that inquirer status. And uh, everyone there, Ed, sends warm greetings to you. Uh, and we're just delighted that uh, you could come to this part of your journey. And that, as you said in a note to me, now we are neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> but at this time, let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth. Remember the words of Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive.
praise you for your mercies, for your goodness that has created us, your grace that has sustained us, your discipline that has corrected us, your patience that has borne with us, and your love that has redeemed us. Help us to love you and be thankful for all your gifts by serving you and delighting to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now we are bold to pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now sing hymn number 391, Take My Life.
thank you. I look forward to our walk together, both in this church and in this presbytery and in this community. Uh, so we praise God. Uh, now, after this, we will have a, a meal in the fellowship hall, so you can please join us there. And uh, we'll use this benediction as the prayer for that, so y'all can go ahead and start eating. So, <laughs> friends, receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go out into the world, serving the Lord and loving one another. Amen. Amen. Amen.